Hey guys, I'm Will for Cybergraded and today we're going to be looking at how we can install PowerOS for VirtualBox on a Windows 10 machine. It does also work for Macintosh, but today I'm going to be using Windows 10. It's a pretty straightforward process, so let's go on the computer and find out how it's done. Okay, so hopefully this video is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to be taking you through it step by step. So if you've never set up a virtual machine, a virtual machine before, or played about with hypervisors um, or virtualization in any capacity. Hopefully it'll be nice and simple for you. There are obviously a couple of prerequisites as with any technical video. You are gonna need a PC with at least eight gigs of RAM, core four CPU, and probably at least 64 gigs of free storage. That's not to say your virtual machine's gonna be 64 gigs, but it does help to leave a bit of space on your host hardware so it's not being all taken up by virtual machines. Anything to do with virtual machines, I tend to install them on a external drive so I can take them with me or I can just kind of swap and change them as needed and they run fine off my external HDD as well, which is pretty cool. So let's jump into it. So the first thing that you are going to need, and I'm not going to show you how to download this because it's painfully easy, is Oracle VirtualBox. Now, this is what's called a Hyperbox. It's basically an open source virtual machine manager if that's what you want to call it. Uh, basically, it's like your platform for installing virtual machines. So you want to go and head over to virtualbox.org, hit this big download button. Obviously, depending on when you're on Windows or Mac, you're going to want the 64-bit version if you're on Windows and you're running Windows 10. And then just choose whatever version of Macintosh OS you're on if you're using the Mac. The next thing you're going to want to need is a Para OS itself. So if you navigate to parrotsec.org forward slash download, you're presented with this page here. Now, obviously there's three versions, the IoT and cloud appliances. This is one I've never touched, but it does sound interesting. There's the home edition, um, and it's got like a really simple GUI, and it comes pre-installed with their version of Word, which I believe is Office Libre or something like that. And then the one that we're focusing on today, which is the security edition. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and click security edition, and then you're gonna to wanna to head and click download. It's gonna open up another one. You're gonna choose where to save it. So I'm just gonna save mine probably to the desktop. And I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I actually already have a copy installed, but you're not gonna cancel it. You're gonna download it and remember where you saved it. So this is where the kind of actual installation begins. So the real meat of the video. Basically, once you've got your image downloaded, I've put mine in a folder called VM, so you can see it in here, Parrot Security, and you've got Oracle VirtualBox installed. You wanna go in ahead and open Oracle VirtualBox. You'll then be presented with this page here, and this is kind of your dashboard. Um, all your VMs will be listed along the side here. You wanna go ahead and click New, and give it a name. So you can call it wherever you want. I'm just gonna call mine Parrot OS. You want to leave the machine folder default obviously you can choose where you're putting it i said i store mine on my external hard drive but for this video i'll just leave it as default for type we're going to go and click linux and for version they don't actually have parrot here obviously because it's quite a niche flavor of linux but the closest you're going to get to it is debian 64. you're going to hit next again as long as you're not going in the red zone here, you can give it as much as you want. I tend to give mine about eight gig, which is about eight, one, nine, something like that. That, that roughly hits about eight gig. Um, you don't need to give it eight gig. You could give it two gig and it would still work fine. But as long as you're not going into this red side, you should be fine. Hit next, create virtual hard disk now. Just leave this on default. Um, you don't want to be splitting it up into various files, so just create the virtual one locally. Hit create. You're then going to want to leave it on VDI, which is the default setting. Again, VDI is the standard one. You're not going to be cha changing it much, I imagine. Um, so just go ahead and click next. Dynamically allocated. Again, for our purposes, it's fine today. Basically, this just means if it needs more memory or it needs more space, it can take it from your host hardware. Or as opposed to it being fixed size, you might run into a couple of errors if you were trying to do you know, big password hash cracking or something like that. So I tend to leave it on dynamically allocated. I've never needed more space um, when I've been using a virtual machine, so it shouldn't make a difference, but it's good practice to leave it on dynamically allocated. 
Next, again, this is where the actual VM is going to be stored. Um, so you want to obviously click on this, find where your virtual machine is stored. Mine is on my desktop in a nice folder called VMs, and then you want to click Save. I'm going to give mine 32 gigs of storage. I've heard people say that anything less than 32 gigs, uh, they run into problems for the actual OS installing itself and any other external tools that you might need. You don't need to give it 32, but it is recommended and it's on the documentation of Parrot OS as well that you have at least 32 gig. After that's done, you hit create and it should come up saying Parrot OS. So that's it. So now we have configured our place where Parrot OS is going to be installed. I like to think of it as like a virtual house. So we've created our virtual house where Parrot is going to live, but we now need to go in and do a bit of decorating, change a couple of settings around the house so it runs nice and smoothly. So first thing, you're going to highlight Parrot OS, you're going to click Settings, and you are going to come over to General and Advanced. You don't have to change this. I like to change it. I understand why some people don't change it, because it can be a security concern. Um, nobody uses my computer apart from me, so I'm perfectly happy keeping this. Um, so I'm changing this from Shared Clipboard and Drag and Drop both to Bidirectional. Now that does exactly what it sounds like on the tin, and basically it means Parrot OS can now share the clipboard with your host machine and drag and drop. It means you can take files and drop them into the host, into the Parrot OS, which is really useful. If you're doing something like password cracking and you've downloaded the source code of a piece of software on your host machine, you can then take that text file and just dump it straight into Parrot OS. There's other ways around it if you don't have this on, but I just find it really, really useful. You then want to come to system. You want to click enable EFI and just leave this as standard. Again, I can't really imagine a world where you're using a floppy disk, but you never know. So kind of fine just to keep it on and it doesn't really make a difference to the speed. Click on processor. I like to give it mine at least two. As long as you're not going in the red zone, it doesn't really matter. But again, I'm gonna keep mine on two. You can play around with the display if you want. Um, it can be quite difficult to kind of um, set up your display before you've actually launched Parrot. So I tend to leave this until I've actually installed my virtual machine and I can play about with it, hit reset, see what it looks like, play about with it, hit reset, see what it looks like. So I would just skip over this bit for now. You then want to come to storage. And right now, as I said, we've basically got an empty PC, but we need to put something bootable into it whether that's a bootable Windows disk or, in our case, a ISO of Parrot. So we want to click this empty disk here, and we want to click this blue disk here, and then we want to click Choose a Disk File. You then want to navigate to where you've downloaded Parrot. Obviously, I said I've kept mine on my desktop in this handy folder called VMs, so I'm going to hit this one, and I'm going to hit Open. You then press OK, and then you can hit Start. This might pop up if you've uh, used virtual machine before, but again, you should only have one, so just click here. You then want to hit try, install, capture. So that basically it's capturing the mouse. And then you can come and press enter, and there you go. And here we go, guys. This is Parrot OS. Now, obviously, I just sped that whole process up because it probably would have been a little bit boring to watch. So this is Parrot OS, and just like with a non-activated Windows version, you can come onto Windows, but you can't activate it and access all of its features, and half the tools are not installed and it's not configured properly. It's exactly the same with Parrot OS. So basically, they've put a nice big-ass button right in the middle there. As soon as it's launched, you just hit Install Parrot OS. Now, this is where you can configure your username, your time zone, a password. So first things first, American English, it comes up. Uh, obviously, I just want UK English or United Kingdom. There we go. Hit next. So it defaults to New York for me, uh, which obviously isn't the one I want. So you kind of roughly try and click on the UK. And yeah, London first time. 
So then you want to hit next and keyboard. If you've set up your time zone, it usually does default to whatever keyboard that it detects. And for me, it detects English UK, which is perfect. Hit next. You just want to select a raised disc, no swap, put swapping in if you want. I don't see why you would need it, but you can if you want. Hit next. Now, what is your name? So, Will. What do you want your login to be? Will. What do you want your computer name to be? Will VirtualBox. You can create a password here. Obviously, if no one else really uses your computer, it doesn't matter too much, but I would recommend still setting up a password uh, and then log in automatically without asking for the password. That's what you can do if you, if you want. Hit next, this gives you a summary page and then hit install. So this takes a wee while, so I'm gonna skip ahead for you guys so you don't have to watch it all because it is quite boring. Um, but come back in a minute. So after that's installed and it's hit 100%, it should kick you off automatically. If it doesn't, it is recommended that you shut down the virtual machine. And you can do that just by hitting the X in the top left hand, right hand corner uh, and then click power off. You can save the state of the machine if you want. So here we are, we have a powered off Power OS. So let's see what happens when we boot it up. So we highlight it and we press start. Again, it can take a little minute depending on how you've configured it, but it shouldn't take too long. So it comes up with this and you want to hit the top option, which is Parrot GNU Linux. And we're getting this border outside because I've not yet configured the um, resolution and the desktop screen size. So that's something, again, that we could configure once we're in, but for, for now you will see uh, this border around the outside. So there we go guys, that's a fully configured Parrot OS. Um, we can come to the menu and we've got all these fancy tools installed up here, applications. You've got, you can see you've got your standard stuff like Office, your privacy stuff like Anon Surf, which is really great. But then you've got amazing things like Hashcat, which is used for hash word pa uh, password cracking. We've got stuff like Metasploit, MS Venom in installed. So you can, you know, you can have a bit of a play with this. We've got John the Ripper, all these crazy tools that you can go on a fun hacking adventure with. Uh, again, don't do anything without permission, but yeah, that's how you install Parrot OS. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Again, as I said, it's relatively straightforward and I hope you have lots of fun playing with Parrot OS because it is a very powerful Linux distribution. Again, if you are gonna do anything with it, just make sure you have permission before whatever you're doing.